Hello everybody, welcome to whatever this is. I am Efren or E or E Man or Big E or Easy E, whichever way you want to call me. I'm just Ben. This is just Ben, <laughs> and this is our breakdown of episode six, the season finale of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or or what? should I say now, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Hell yeah. Yes, indeed. Hell As we yeah. got the, I would say, probably one of the most comic book accurate suits I have ever seen. Sure, Agreed. there's a little difference here or there, but like, as soon as I saw the suit, bro, I was so ex I was so ecstatic that I was actually watching the episode in my work break room. And as soon as they showed that suit out loud, I was like, oh my god, it looks so cool! <laughs> and there was like five people in the break room. And when I looked up, they all were looking right at me, and I was like... My bad. My bad. I went right back to watching with a huge-ass smile on my face because I was that happy that we saw that whole suit in its entirety, and man, were we not disappointed. It looks great. It looks fantastic. Uh, I, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to share uh, Rick Reminder, the author who wrote all new Captain America. One who, of my favorite writers. Who debuted Sam Wilson as Captain America. Uh, I think this would have been in like 20... 14, 2015-ish. I believe so. Um, 2015. He took a crap ton of shit from fans, people in general, of A, about making Sam Captain America, uh, and about, like, the costume design. Right. Just in general. Um, and he had done an Instagram post after the episode debuted, just being like, I'm so grateful that people have connected with oh, the character. I didn't know that. That's awesome. And that people are inspired by it. And he was like, if... Anybody can be inspired by this character, then all of it will have been worth it. And he knows. And he knows. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was very shortly after his run on all new Captain America concluded that Rick Remender left Marvel Comics to do Excuse solely me. Image Comics That's work. That's true. Um, and a fun little fact: when Excuse they me. when Carlos Pacheco was designing Sam's Captain America costume, Marvel actually wanted to pull the wings. They wanted what? Him, they wanted him to just be Captain America. And Reminder stuck to his guns on this one. He was like, Good. no, this is part of who Sam is. Like, it's part of his identity. I was about to say that. It's how he fights. It's how he moves. You you can't. And so Marvel was just like, oh, sure, whatever. It's true. And so they, and, and I think there's some degree of they knew it was, it would be temporary. So they let it slide. Um, but thing, yeah, and they created such an iconic, cool looking dude. So awesome. It's, it's hard to create a variant on a patriotic hero costume. And you can ask Rob Liefeld because he keeps trying to do it and it keeps being terrible. <laughs> but, like, this version of... And we could see Sam's feet. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam has feet. Well, to be fair, there have been... Captain America's iron... His, like, armor suit that he wore oh, in the late 90s was, yeah. is terrible. It's terrible. American Eagle, other than having the colored hair to me, yeah. kind of looks dumb. Um, what was her name? Liberty Bell? There was a, a female teenage sidekick in the the mid nineties. Oh, um, I did not know that. It's it's hard to take red, white, blue, and then stars and stripes, and make a viable, good looking costume yeah, that doesn't look stupid. It is. But man, this it suit looks, looks really great. Oh, and the thing so is, cool. You, you mentioned that Marvel wanted Reminder to lose the wings. Yeah. See, you saying that to me, I thought to myself, well, you know, losing the wings, yeah, he would be Captain America, but he wouldn't be Sam Wilson. Yes. You know, yeah, and so see, Revan are sticking to his guns was is crazy. That's why I love the guy, man. Well, and it's it's such a thing of again, it like weird. Yeah, it's it's like it having Thor without a hammer or or like a, a tool of some kind for an extended period. It would be like Wolverine without claws. How like, much less cool would he point? have looked without yeah. the wing? He just would have been a dude in a suit. Yeah, like nah, it's the the the, the symbolism would not have been the same. Yeah. Seeing him with the suit and the shield and the wing spread, that was like one of the most dopest freaking images you will ever see. Yeah. It's so awesome. It really is. Like, well, when they first showed him, he threw the shield. They purposely slowed it down yeah. so you could see with the wing spread. It's so fun. It was cool. a real super cool shot. It's super, super cool shot. It's it's one of the shots that I considered for the thumbnail for this episode ah, when I was putting it together, actually. And there's, that would have been pretty awesome. There's not a lot of good screenshots of Sam in his Captain America outfit out yet, um, but that was one of them. And the only problem is because it's an action shot, he's very blurry. Yeah. So I didn't go with that one. But again, from, from a... From a 
taking a comic book image, this is your panel, and then mm-hmm. blowing it up to your TV screen. Yeah, God, if it doesn't awesome. look cool as hell. I know. It oh, looks God. Awesome. That was fantastic. So, somebody posted um, this, like, an image of, like, um, like, Scarlet Witch and then Wanda as Scarlet Witch. And then Sam Wilson cap in the comics and then him yeah. in the show. You know, and... Uh, what, what was the caption? The caption was like, um, oh my god, it, it, it kind of, damn, I kind of forget, but like, oh, it basically said like, what a time to be alive right now as a Marvel fan, yep. you know, seeing these two outfits in the MCU, you know, and I, and to me, I absolutely well, agree, I really do. Even to, to be a Marvel fan, and especially as someone like, as I've, I'm not one of those fans who as he's gotten older has gone like, Things were better back in the old days yeah. when comics were whatever they were back then. New stuff's terrible. Like, that's that's not who I am at all. Like, the comics need to change just like we need to change as we grow. I loved Sam as Captain America in the comics. I felt he got way too short of a time to be that I character. Agree. And I, you know, the way these movie franchises work is at this point you would reboot Captain America classically and you would get another white guy and you'd get the same stories again. You'd get Batman, but with stars and stripes on it. It's really cool to me to see Marvel acknowledge, no, we have finished with that character for now. We are going to focus on this character for now. And then to not only get this whole series leading to this development, but then to announce immediately afterwards that Captain America 4 is in development starring Sam Wilson as Captain America. That's amazing to me. And from the showrunners. Oh, which that's the only thing that makes me a little nervous because I still still don't think this was a terribly well-plotted show. It was a super emotional show. It was a super emotional show, but, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it in a minute. Um, but uh, the fact that they try to let me have a little emotion when it comes to the the main villainess, I guess you can say, I had none. The the things that I was emotionally yeah. invested in were, were Sam. Yes, Bucky. To some degree, Bucky, less as the show went on, uh, and Isaiah. Mm-hmm. And God, th- like again, we'll get into it more as yeah, we, we discuss we the episode. But Sam and Isaiah, again, go... That's towards the end. That's towards the end. Yeah, I've, oh. yeah I felt that too. Oh. I really did. That like, was, I was like, tears in my so, eyes like, level that's of so, like... So, that's so... So great, man. Amazing. That for him. Yeah, so incredible. So we, we open with, as, as I vaguely complained about at the end of our last episode, Sam flying from Louisiana to New York City in the space of, I'm assuming, two minutes. Uh... Because, like, the hostage situation hasn't changed at all. Yeah, vibranium must have been fast, man. man. They probably put, hey, you, you, that vibranium armor, buddy. Just, they probably put extra boosters in that shit. Uh, but so he, he gets to New York. He makes mm. his, uh, an unofficial debut, more than anything else. Um, right he called away, Sharon Carter as backup. He called Sharon as backup. We got Bucky as backup. Bucky as um, backup. If we want to know, you know, she, yes, used the same type of spy technology as Natasha used in The Winter Soldier. Yeah. Nice little nod to that there. And we also saw that used in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show yes. back when that wasn't terrible as well in the early seasons. <laughs> that's true. Um, but again, that's it's cool to see that continue to get a reference, uh, a nice use. Yes. Um, we had John show up again as well um, with his makeshift S.H.I.E.L.D., which I mean... Held up hey, a lot held better up, than I thought it would. Pretty nicely, yeah. I don't, I don't know Same if here. I don't know if he's a lot better at welding than I expected, or if that super soldier serum's not as good as I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, both of us called it wrong. He didn't seem to give a single goddamn that Sam Wilson was Captain America. No. He he wasn't. It was God. John's arc is so confusing to me. I, I, I do admit that, like, when, you know, after he was fighting Carly and everything, and then, you know, the time came where um, the people in the vehicle were about to fall off the building, yeah. and then he was choosing between fighting Carly and saving them, I, I actually was rooting for him to save the people. Yes. And I was like, come on, John, do the right thing. Save the people. Save the people. And then when he did, I'm like, yeah, I, all right, John, cool, I think I know? did a similar, like, yes! Yeah, oh. I was like, all right, there you go. You, you, you do have some morals, man. You do have some morals. You, you know, you didn't let that serum take over you, yeah. you know? So, like, it's cool to, you know, kind of see his arc, even when Carly said, 
that fucking Lamar's death did not matter, you know? that That's the thing. She says Lamar's death didn't matter. She also said, well, you know, if we have to kill the hostages, we will. But then, like, when it comes to her death, the way Sam was carrying her, was I supposed to sympathize with that death? After she literally just threatened to kill all these people? And somebody close to John See, I, I took said it- that, like... His death didn't matter. I took it more as a sign of Carly was becoming the very things that she had been fighting against the whole time. Yeah, that it makes was, sense. It was the that idea of like, don't uh, what is it? Don't hunt monsters lest you become one yourself. By that's by, what Zemo. That's what Zemo told yeah. Sam a couple episodes before. Uh, and by the time Carly got here, she had got to a point where it didn't matter who she stepped on and who she hurt, so long as she accomplished her goals which was the same problem that she had with the GRC, who were stepping on these these people who had moved during the blip and now were suddenly going to be forced out of their homes. Um, again, I still don't think that particular threat was very well like tied into our central plot. No. Um, that's That, to me, is still the weakest thing. Like, yeah. Carly's the least interesting character in the show. Yeah, I just didn't think also, as a whole, the Flag Smashers were like you know kind of painted as like you know a very massive threat that i i guess watching the show should have taken seriously well and it's it's interesting to like the thing that makes the most interesting is that anybody could be a flag smasher because of the the phone app and that's at the end when they do get defeated and they're being carted off and the one guard is like one people one world i was like this is gonna be like the new hydra oh my god oh my god and then then it got blown ah, up oh no and i was like (laughs) but this old dude i was like like, oh no He's like, nah, y'all are done. Like, oh, but but it still Im- indicates that the systems of power have been yeah. infiltrated, or at least the people within them, some of them sympathize with Carly's sentiments and the mm-hmm. things she wanted to accomplish, which was Sam's whole point making his speech to the senators, is what happens like when this happens again. Yeah. Because it will happen again. It will. Um, I do have to say I was very happy to see Zemo's plot line at least conclude in terms of he accomplished his goals. Um, I do. You didn't think they were going to show him again I, a couple I, of episodes ago. And I still wish that they had it cut to him. I would have been very happy if they had just pulled back and shown the butler. Because mm-hmm. it took me a second to remember who that was. And I was like, who is this old man? What is he doing? And then I was like, oh, that's Zemo's butler. Yeah, and then that's, they, it took me a second too. Yeah. And then they cut like, to Zemo oh, and I was like... Oh, that old guy. Oh. Uh, yeah. And then they, they cut to Zemo and I was like, oh, well, thanks for spelling out everything cool i guess that's not a mystery we needed but that's fine like that just from a storytelling perspective i was like man i know you think we're stupid sometimes but like i'd have been Uh, cool with just the butler shot like plus it also goes to show zemo still has eyes on the outside and and to be fair it shows that he can still act despite Mm -hmm. being trapped in the raft trapped in the raft he's he doesn't need to escape or or like he told the one character in madripoor people like us always have ways of getting out like he's just not worried about it yeah um (laughs) he's not and he's just reading a book yeah that's all he's doing nice and easy he's just chillaxing man so cool to see that zemo is still available for play later on if anyone chooses to do so is batrock batrock is still in play (laughs) he's still still alive i didn't think he'd be like this involved Agreed. Especially in the season finale. I still don't think we needed him here. Probably uh, not, but, but I think it was more to, like, um, and we'll get into who the power broker is in, in a little bit, but I think it was more to pursue that kind of storyline and to, I think, because it's George St. Pierre, yeah. they wanted to involve him a little more. You know, so once again, pitting him against Captain America, yeah. you know. Well, and it's. It was also kind of a good way to show Sam's growth from yeah. where he started the show to the end of the show. The only problem I have is, like, Sam handled Batroc pretty well at the start of the show, so we don't really get to see any character growth because he could already take Batroc down. Like, he's a skilled acrobat, but he's still a skilled acrobat. Yeah. Like, um, the only, the only like, again, other than being like, I'm not sure why you're here, the, the only real problem I had with Batroc was that when Sam was first fighting him, Sam didn't, like, use his backpack or his wings, like, in combat at all. Um, and I was waiting to get that moment of, like, you're fighting like you're Steve. You need to fight like you're Sam Wilson. Mm-hmm. And to have their, that their moment. first fight? Yeah, when, when they were in the GRC, like, office oh, kind of area. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and he and he never had that moment. There was never a, like, this is how I fight now, well, that I've got the shield on. Well, and, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, like, you know, and we talked about this before, he would combine, like, the you know, athleticism that he, you know, 
was learning with the shield play and the wings. Yeah. You know, like all at once, you know, because he did a lot of like wing stuff like throughout, yeah. you know, it was Winter Soldier, then more in Civil War, and then some here. We saw we saw a lot more wing combat towards the beginning of this show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did see a lot more wing combat towards the beginning, and that's where I thought it was gonna go with this fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. You know. That's a hell of an advantage to have, you know? I understand you're in a building, but, like, I'm sure there's ways you can kind of retract it to a certain degree. Well, and especially even from the idea of using them yeah, using as them extra arm exactly. kind of things. George is still a dude who That's has a true. limited reach and range. If he has to block two attacks say, from this side... You don't necessarily have to block with your arm. you got a wing to block it, you know? And, yes. hey, guess what? Now they're fucking vibranium wings, so you could probably break his fucking hand when you block them. And you That's have actually a, proje- a good point. I didn't think about that. And you have a projectile weapon, so you could throw... Yes. The, you could do, like, the classic Captain America of, like, throw the shield at something else, and then the bad guy's like, oh, you missed! And then while it's ricocheting around the room, and you're blocking and, like, defending, the shield hits him from behind kind of thing. Um, you know what? You know what they could have done. They could have at least had him go against like three to four guys to kind of show that off. I understand sure. they maybe they were on a budget, but like to show off his kind of new fighting skills and to have him fighting intact with the wings and the shield yeah. to basically let people know this is a new type of cap. Not yeah. just you know, not just visually, but like you know, physically as well. Yeah. Sure, he might not be as strong and as agile as Steve, but like, he still has agility. He still has his own certain set of skills. You yeah. Know? And I'm sure we'll see those in the new Cap Cap movie. Oh, definitely. Sure. I hope. Yeah. Um. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, from the first Avenger to the Winter Soldier. I mean, look how much Steve's skills have improved. I do. Sure, he had the serum, but you know. Yeah. I'm sure they'll do that. To be fair, uh, I do want to give the show credit that Sam did have some great aerial sequences. Oh, yeah. Um, flying through the city, chasing down the hostages. Um, uh, that small part when after, you know, Au Revoir to um, Batroc, when he threw the shield and then flew in the air and then, like, and caught the shield, which I, I think last episode or two, I was like, oh, aerial shit with the shield. Yeah. Like, even that small thing I thought was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even uh, his fight with Carly towards the end we specifically got, like, a long hallway shot of Sam doing, like, flips mm, and shooby yeah. through the air. Like, it, it, for me, it was the epitome of uh, Star Wars Episode One's unnecessary Jedi twirl, where they'd, <laughs> they'd be fighting somebody, and then they would just start spinning for, like, 30 seconds, Actually, and you're like, I don't, <laughs> episode, I don't uh, Star Wars geek. Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, while Obi-Wan and Anakin are fighting. Yeah. They actually are fighting in the right in the middle of the fight. They both do the d- yeah. This light so so tomorrow. much of that fight is a light which, show. Which I thought like when I first saw it, I thought that was like the most dopest shit because they went right into a force push in it, you know. But then watching it later, I'm like, that was yeah, completely unnecessary. It was just for show. Yeah, it looks. I, I get it. Yes. And like Carly <laughs> likes attacks at him and he dodges with like a backflip, and I was like, oh cool, like he's he's using the the flexibility and the acrobatics that we saw him specifically practicing with in the last episode. That's dope. And then he, like, keeps backflipping, and then he does, like, a somersault, and then, like, a twist in the air. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, all right. I get it. You're all amazing. The, all of a sudden, we were going to see <laughs> Judge's card. Yeah. <laughs> ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. No, 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 knockout. <laughs> the new Captain America breaks the fucking record. Um, but, yeah, I, I just, like I said, I just kind of chuckled to myself. I was like, I get it, man. But but again, they like you got they did, skills now. We get it. Yeah, they did do a really good job showcasing Sam's aerial combat skills, um, his tactical skills. Again, I I loved the helicopter rescue. Yeah, um, that was super cool I, to look I, at. I loved how I don't know what the new drones are called or if he has names I'm, for them. I'm yet. assuming they're just know. red wings. They're just red wings. But I I don't know if it's like know red if wing one or two. Yeah, but. but I think they're blue now. Well, I don't know. It's fine. Yeah, but I I really maybe did. they're red and blue wings. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that'd be cool. I I just really liked the part when uh, one of them went to the helicopter and just scanned, you know, scanned, uh, well, you know, which basically which one's a pilot, 
Yeah. You know, which one's good bringing at... Bringing up, like, their, their histories. Yeah, bringing up their history. Pulling I thought up their Wikipedia a, page. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a really cool nod and basically letting, you know, see, Cap can't do... Or, you know, Steve Rogers doesn't have the technology to do stuff like that. When when you know. Sam, Bucky, and John are hunting down the Flag Smashers and he does, like, the infrared vision yes. and he sees the footprints. Again, that was a cool way of being, like, remember, Sam has to have goggles because he's human yes. and he's flying through the air so he's going to have wind shear affecting his eyes. Um, so he needs goggles, but that's also a cool way to integrate them into his combat and his tactics. Mm -hmm. like, like you said, in a way that Steve never had access to something like that. Um, and he specifically was always taking his helmet off because uh, yeah. he's Chris Evans. <laughs> so, like, why wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and we still get to see a lot of Sam's face is, is visible. He doesn't have a clunky helmet that he yeah. has to wear. Um, but I, I agree. That was a cool use of the, the technology yeah, that they had was, going on. I thought that was really cool. And, um, you know, he made an escape plan, you know, for that and everything. I thought that was a great strategy. You know, um, like you said, the whole infrared thing, that was that was really cool. Um, just I like the extra technology, you know, to basically tell you that this, this is a new cap, you know. Like, this is what we're getting. Hopefully, like, like I just said, Captain America 4, you know, just just exemplifies that whole yeah. thing. Well, and yeah. it was um, it was cool to see him like when he caught the vehicle that was going to fall off the yes. framework with the GRC members inside, using the other two Red Wings and then his backpack and his backpack to offset the fact that he doesn't have, have enhanced strength. strength. Yes, um, again was a, a clever way of demonstrating that that fits with the character in the world that they've built. Sam isn't someone who can just grab a car and lift it back onto a, a you know any kind of area. Yeah. Um, I really loved, um, I think it was when the helicopter, something was about to crash onto the bridge and Sam landed, held up the shield oh, and then yeah. the wings closed around him. Um, I love that. That to and me then, was like, super and dope then the looking. People, all the people clapped. Yeah. yeah. After, after he did that. Yeah. I thought that was a really cool touch. One of my favorite moments from Remeter's all new Captain America is, uh, Sam's being chased by the armadillo who's a, like, for those who oh. don't know, he's, like, an eight-foot-tall, like, two, probably, like, a thousand-pound dude shaped like an armadillo. He's a big orange guy. He's, I love Rick Remen. He's ridiculous-looking. He makes his own villains, and it's awesome. Well, Armadillo's an old Marvel character, oh, okay. but he, he was that. putting a new a new touch on him. Yeah. Um, and the armadillo he was about that. to run over Sam, mm -hmm. and Sam was like, I'm just a dude. Like, I can't stop him. I have to redirect him. And so he just, like, got down, put up the shield, and then did wings over the sides and just tried to like ramp, ramp him, him over himself uh. um so this was kind of a cool like I, I doubt it was a nod to that but it was cool to see that echo happen yeah. in both of these stories again a cool way to integrate the shield with the wings with sam's experience in mm -hmm. a way that's unique to him where steve i don't think steve could probably handle getting run over by the armadillo but he could do a much better job of getting run over <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In terms of say, at least he'd have a better chance of kind of stopping him rather yeah. than Sam, but it is a cool way to, you know, use all the vibranium. Yeah, yeah. We um, like you say, we do have Sharon Carter as the power broker, um, officially revealed. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't think I've finished processing whether or not I like. I like the basic idea. I like Sharon Carter as this disillusioned patriot. She's a super well-trained spy. She knows what she's doing. She just doesn't kind of have nationalistic ideals anymore. It's about whatever's best for me, mm -hmm. um, which is an interesting take on the character. Uh, and I'm I, yeah, and I'm fine with the route. Again, I'm still just like, so wait, like you you saw Sam and Bucky and Zemo, and you were like, these are my ticket back into America, and I'll use access to America to maybe potentially get back in with the government so that I can maybe sell secrets. So I'm going to give away my scientist and then b b blow up all of the flag. Like, I still don't understand her motivation for this show. It it feels like they were trying to pull something off at the end where she's like, I'm just making the best of a bad situation. Well, well, all the flag smashes are dead. Now I'll sell government secrets. But like... Well, that's the thing. You basically told us last the last episode that she was the power broker. I mean, they basically weren't hiding it. Unless, you know, they were trying to smokescreen the smokescreen. Yeah. You know, basically to let you know, hey, you know, she's purposely talking to, you know, Batroc on the phone. But other people are like, oh, you know what? That's a little too obvious. So maybe she's not the power broker. Well, but, you know, I, I kind of stuck to my guns. was like, 
No, I think they're going to make her the power broker. Well, the reason I didn't like it is because she's... Oh, the, I never said I liked it. Yeah. That's, the power broker is introduced saying, I'm going to kill you all. Yeah. And then the next time we see Sharon Carter directly connected to the power broker is when she hires Batroc to help the Flag Smashers. Like, why wouldn't you hire Batroc to kill the Flag Smashers? Yeah. Why is this... Or, like, why wouldn't you provide intelligence to Sam and Bucky so that they could stop the Flag Smashers? If your idea was... I need the Flag Smashers to either sell them as superhuman agents or use their blood to make a new serum. This is not how you go about it. Like, you killed them. Yeah. Like, she and sent the one, she you? melted the one dude. And, the, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. did. <laughs> Hardcore. And then, is there a, a certain purpose on if she has to involve herself in it? I know, like, to basically say... You know, plain as day, I'm here, so you can't suspect me in any way. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, just, uh, I don't know. I guess to basically say that she was there, and in that way she kind of served a purpose, instead of, like, kind of stepping in the in the background well, and, and it, letting everything happen. And it, it double frustrates me, because she's like, I haven't set foot in America in years. Like, I'm a wanted outlaw. I can't even visit my family. And then she shows up with a facial disguise on that clearly was good enough to get her into the country this time. Why couldn't she have done that at any point and visited her family? Yeah. Like, oh, and that's what confuses me. And I thought about this on the way here. Was she blipped? It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it, right? Yeah. So if she wasn't blipped, and I don't, and I don't know, but why wouldn't like? Steve trying to be looking for her these past like five years. Or why wouldn't she get in contact with yeah, Steve? Yeah, why wouldn't she reach out to Steve? Or the Avengers, like you would think the Avengers would have contacted her during that blip period when they didn't have anybody. Exactly. Because they needed skilled talented people and Sharon's yeah. proven herself able. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's, Sharon feels like an afterthought to everything that's going in. Like it feels like there's a Sharon Carter miniseries that I'm missing It's almost that like doesn't they a, exist. It's almost like they had a find a way to get her character involved somehow. Yeah. And they're like, well, we'll give her this, like, overarching storyline in the series, you know, so that way she can be relevant. I don't, I don't even you feel know? like it's an overarching thing. It's, it's just connect the dots. Like, there's no arc here. She doesn't grow as a character. She's just there. Yeah, she's, she's here to be she's here is what it feels series. like. She's part of Captain America's legacy. So it's almost like they felt somehow they had a put her in there. Yeah. You know, just to continue her character and that's, somehow. And like I said, I like where they left her off at. Um, in the in the comics, the power broker himself has never really been an interesting person. Mm -hmm. It's what he can do is what's interesting. The things, the the characters that he does create, because he, he ends up creating a bunch of villains and super villains and bad guys who turn into good guys and shit like that. Um, I won't say the power broker doesn't affect the Marvel comics at all, but who the power broker is doesn't matter it's the things that he does that matter so this this is a cool way of making the power broker somebody interesting that maybe you can explore in Captain America 4 or potentially a different show especially if Sharon's going to be selling US military yeah. secrets to who who knows to we have no idea it could be anybody no idea it could be anybody um, could be Mephisto damn could it could be the Mandarin could be the Mandarin uh, we've got Armor Wars coming up yeah. which from the comics at least is a story where multiple people use Iron Man technology to create their own suits of armor possibly Secret Invasion maybe that information gets stolen by Sharon and mm -hmm. sold to people around the world I mean she did make a big deal about like getting government intelligence yeah. and secrets I did. and all the above. I did love that when they were starting that scene with her getting her part in, um, the dude making the announcement was like, the Carter name has always been synonymous with honesty and trust. And I'm just like, dude. It's a good thing Sharon is dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah, but I know. That's what is going to make her good in this role is because no one's going to suspect. No one's going to suspect her at all. Uh, within our cast, anyways. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like I said, I think that's a cool setup for a new villain. It's a cool setup, I, but I'm really hoping, like considering I felt that the villainy in this series was a little underwhelming, I hope they go big on Cap 4. The, the real villain was Sam's self-doubt mm. all along. Very nice, and I and I Poetry don't feel like motion. that was a very well done plot line either. I don't feel so, like it either. 
<sighs> I think if they had focused more on that. We needed... This show needed one less character, and I don't know who <clears throat> it should have been yet, because um, my heart wants to say it's Bucky, but I love Bucky. And I, I love Bucky. And I don't and want him to not be around. To but be I'm, honest with you, I don't think the show would have been the same without him. I don't think it would have. See? I don't know. That's where we differ. I think it might have been cleaner. I don't think so. Part of me wants to say Zemo, but well, I well then Zemo's I guess I so can fun. say, you know, it's because of Sebastian Stan being there. Yeah, you know, the show wouldn't have been the same. And to be fair, I did really enjoy Bucky's stuff in this final episode. Yeah, um, I, I loved. loved yeah. Well, I was, I, I was about to say, uh, you know, good kind of segue in there. I loved the part when um, he was he was rescuing the people in the vehicle. And, you know, he was trying to break the thing off, and finally he got it off, and the people ran off. But right before that, the guy was like, thank you, thank you for saving us. And it's almost like Bucky was taken aback for a second, and then he's like, you're welcome. Because it's almost like him living his life the way he did, and then him being the Winter Soldier and everything and all that, I think this might have been like the first time ever in his life that someone actually thanked him for saving their lives. And it's almost like he was in shock that, like, oh, my God. I sa- I did save these people's lives. Holy shit. It's almost like that that was a good character turn in there as well. And he's, like, taking it in. And he's like, you're welcome. Well, I, you know, because it's almost like he's never really heard that before. I think it's a moment for him where he he finally looks at himself as a hero. Where everything else he's done has either been as a soldier or a warrior. Like, even the times yeah. when he's teamed up with the Avengers, like in the battles in Infinity War, he was just one more dude yeah. standing on a battle line. He wasn't really a superhero. Um, so it, it was definitely cool to get that moment with him. Um, I really I, liked that. I loved him telling Yuri about killing his son. Um, I'm sad to see that relationship go. Yeah. Um... But it, it had to be done. Like, Yuri needed it. Bucky needed yeah. it. Um, that's, man. yeah. But. That's what I really liked is, and um, I saw this online, and I really liked it, that um, you can tell at the end is Bucky is so over, you know, like, absolutely being the Winter Soldier. And I think that's what this series was about, too. Um, it actually would have been cold. The last title cover would have been, like, Captain America and Bucky instead of Winter Soldier, but I guess that's it. his alias is Winter Soldier. Yeah. But I, I thought it was really cool how they said that at the end when he was, you know, at the party with Sam's friends and family that, like, he was so comfortable in that moment that he did not wear a glove. Yeah. When he... When he, lit, when he took arm. it off, he never yeah. put it back on. He never put it back on, exactly. He was comfortable with the arm. You can see, like, when the kids were hanging on the arm. That was cool. And he was just talk, talking to Sarah, blah, 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 like that. You know, you can tell he was just so comfortable, him being him. Yeah. You know, playing around with the kids, you know. He didn't feel that self-doubt at all. I saw an image set online, similarly, where the show started with Bucky saying that that shield was the closest thing he had left to a family. Yeah. And now the show ends with him as an accepted part to some degree of Sam's extended family. Mm -hmm. And he's there chatting up with Sarah, hanging out with the kids, having a good time with all of these people who are friends of the Wilson family. He brought a cake. Yeah. Yeah, Um, I thought that was cool. And it's just, again, it's, it's cool to see the character reach that point. Um, Again, I, I'm frustrated by the character journey to get there because I don't Mm -hmm. really quite feel like we did it. Um, I was very annoyed that he left. I'm happy that he left the book with the doctor Um, I was annoyed that he was like, thanks for all your hard work, Doc. Because I was like, the person who set you straight was Sam. Sam. At the end of episode five. That doctor didn't fucking help you at all. No. Sam should be a psychologist. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he knew how to talk to veterans, so that's really good. Yeah. And, you know, so that, again, could that have been structured a little better? Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, But it was very happy to see Bucky reach some degree of peace. Uh, wherever we go to see him, if we see him again in the MCU, who knows? I'm hoping so. I'm sure we will. Like his, po- I think his popularity has grown immensely. Yeah, you know, ever it's, since I, this. I hoped like that's always the trick. Uh, I was discussing this with one of my coworkers. Like, there's so many characters in this show who end with we could show up again, 
but we don't know yeah. where that would be. Like, it feels like Marvel keeps, like, dumping out Lego pieces, and they keep being like, look at this Lego, and look at this Lego, and look at this one. And you're like, what are you going to build? And they're like, I'm not going to tell you. And then they, like, squirrel away to their corner and they build <laughs> something, and you have no idea what's going on with it. Because uh, along those lines, we have John Walker uh, yeah. finally going from I am Captain America to... U.S. agent. The U.S. agent as, like, a happy puppy dog, which... God, John's character arc is so yeah, this whole no. season. I thought the suit looked cool. The suit looks cool. Yeah, the suit looks cool. I'm like, look at that black! I was Ah look at that black! Very And he's got and unlike the other blue suit he wore, he actually has white. Yeah. Yeah. So they changed that up. So it's pretty cool how like in a way purposely, you know, he went from that suit that had like no white to he actually it's a little white, but he still has white stripes. Yeah. So, you know, there's some, it's just it's a little little purity because, you know, he did kind of end up doing a little good, you know. Yep. And plus, he did earn the respect of Bucky and Sam, so I thought that was cool. Yeah. You know, but yeah, when at, when he came out with the, the black, the US, the official U.S. Asian outfit, yes, I thought he looked cool too. He, he looked very cool. He looked very cool, Um, yes. I'm, like, I keep, I keep going back and forth because on the one hand, like, I want to be really upset at the character because he, he did kill somebody. But on the other yeah. hand, I want him to be redeemed and I want him to be saved. And they do save him in this to some, like, again, he gave up his, his weird hang up of, I am captain America. He let the shield go so he could save the people's lives, worked effortlessly, effortlessly with Sam and Bucky in order to take down the rest of the flag smashers. Um, when he was chasing after the Flag Smashers, him and Bucky, they kind of had a choice. But then I'm, I'm guessing they both agreed that they used the application to send the police there. Yeah. And which then was, he, he quoted Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. You know. which, which was one of those great, like, it, it's a great character moment to yeah. show that John isn't a psychopath. He's not this evil dictator character. Like, yeah. No, he's an honest to God patriot who's trying to help the country. Maybe he took it too far. Yeah. And he was punished for it. Um, he knew he did. Yeah. You know, that's what it um, seemed like. You know, it, it's definitely, again, to some degree, it, it feels a bit like missing the mark, given that uh, in the comics, after John killed somebody, was when he was like, I'm not fit to be Captain America. Yeah. And it's really weird to have him go, I'm going to kill somebody, and then go, but I am still I'm Captain still America. Captain America. But now I'm not yeah, Captain now America. I'm not Captain America. Like from a from an arc perspective, we we arced and then had an extra little beat, and that beat trips me up a little bit. That should have happened here with this. Yeah. Like if you're going to do that, you have him kill one of the flag smashers at the GRC conference, and that's when he's like, "I can't, I can't be this. Maybe I'm, maybe I am something else, but I'm not Captain America." Oh, look at that! There's Captain America. That dude's Captain America. Good luck, buddy. <sighs> kind of thing. <laughs> Um, I did love Sam's speech moment. Yes. Um, the second it started... Pretty powerful. Part of me was like, this is what I hate about a Captain America comic, is when Captain America stands in front of the page for like six pages, and he's like, here's my speech about what it means to word be bubble, American. Word bubble, word bubble, word bubble, word bubble, yeah. And it's, it's classic. <laughs> yeah. It's Mark Grunwald to the hilt, 100%. And on the one hand, I hate it because it's not visually interesting. But on the other hand... It's like Brian Michael Bendis' normal writing. Except, anyway. <laughs> except with more of a point. Yeah, Bendis would exactly. have gone on 17 different tangents and talked Ooh, about breakfast yeah, somehow. Yeah, don't get me started on that, yeah. Um, but, god damn, if that wasn't a, a moving speech, an arousing conversation, um, it's the first time Sam felt like he had a perspective, yes. finally, within the show, other than I don't want the shield. Um and so that was a really cool moment. And I loved Very seeing cool I loved seeing him allude to the GRC as like, you have the same amount of power that Thanos did. Yes. And you could cause just as much harm with it. Or you could not do that. And you could do something better. Let's see where that gets you. Um, I thought that was great. Um, it's cool to see that Thanos and the blip, um, despite being defeated and overcame are still, still having an impact. Still having an, an impact, exactly. Yeah, it, it feels more real world than just like, it happened, but we're over it, let's all go back to business. Um, yeah. That was really, it was cool seeing him take them all to school. Um, 
It really is. I love know. the I love the dude being like, "That's the Black Falcon," <laughs> and then I was like, "Nah, nah best Captain, Captain America. America." Absolutely. Oh, that's so cool. It's Captain America, son. Yeah. I thought uh, that was great. Yeah. And then of course we have Sam reconnecting with Isaiah, uh, and and not just that, but Isaiah and Elijah watching Sam make that speech on TV. Yes. Um, exactly. Watching Isaiah like struggle with seeing it and like you could see him be both like you're insane but proud at the same time and just kind of just like sitting back just utterly shocked um i did like that part too when you know elijah said something to sam and he's like you need to learn some manners yeah you know i thought that was great yeah you know and elijah kind of brushed him off but like yeah well even when (laughs) it's cool that he said that though because i'm sure everybody was thinking that yeah so uh even after uh, when Sam, after Sam and Eli, or Isaiah like talk for a little bit in the garden, um, and then they go to leave with Elijah like leaning on on the side of the fence, being like, "Where are we going? Where are we going?" Like it's cool to see him go from disconnected because every other previous scene, it kind of felt like he was Isaiah's guardian. Yeah, like he was kind of the front line. If you could get past him, then you could talk to then Isaiah. You could talk to Isaiah, yeah. Even if physically he couldn't stop you at all. Um, <clears throat> It was really cool to see him go from Very someone... protective of him. Yeah. It was cool to see him go from someone who was protective of to someone excited by now. Yeah. Like, he saw Sam in that suit in a way that he never saw his grandfather. Yeah. And he was inspired by it. And knowing that in the comics, Elijah Bradley goes on to become Patriot, it's really cool to start to see that potentially happening here with him being like, let's go. Let's get a, like... I'm That's, excited by this. It's really awesome, too, because of the fact that, like, now we see this side of the Captain America Museum where Isaiah Bradley is, and he could look at his grandfather yeah. in a whole new... Is it grandfather, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, Eli- it's not great, grandfather. El- Elijah's, it's grandfather. Elijah's father, in the comics anyways, is a character named Josiah or Josiah X. Okay. Uh, he was he was vaguely... Um, like a, a black black rights advocate um, in between the scenes. Uh, um, he very briefly joined a, <clears throat> a super team called The Crew, written by uh, Christopher Priest. They weren't really... Uh, it was one of those, they're a team of sense. characters, but they're not a team of characters. Um, and he fought alongside the Black Panther. Um, oh, my brain's dropping out. I want to say the White Tiger, but I'm probably wrong. Mm-hmm. It's been a while yeah. since I read The Crew. Um but yeah, he is a character who's existed in the Marvel Universe. He's just okay. always been... He's n- Josiah himself never intended to be a superhero. Mm-hmm. Um, where, like, Elijah, once he was like, I'm going to be a patriot, was like, I'm going to be a patriot! Like, that's he was cool. going for it. Um, okay. But I, I loved... But this. That's, that's really cool, you know, that, like, now he sees this, this you know, wing dedicated... This whole wing dedicated to Elijah, you know, and... <clears throat> now, like... You know, he's even more proud of his grandpa. And then now he sees Sam in Captain America. So that's going to inspire him to be Patriot. You know, which is a really cool lead-in, you know. It, yeah. it really is if they do decide to make a Young Avengers. Uh, assuming you know, we're getting one? I mean, so far they have about, what, four or five members? Yeah. You know, already that kind of exist? The, the characters exist. Whether yeah, the or not characters they'll exist. do anything with them is always kind of the, the trade-up. Yeah. Which I have a feeling they might... You know, but that is probably not until years in the future. Yeah. Who knows? Well, because that's... Um, they won't be young anymore. I had... I feel like it was earlier today. I read something <clears throat> where Wyatt Russell does not know if he has a future in the MCU as the U.S. agent. Mm-hmm. Like, e- either he's lying, which is possible, or Marvel doesn't have anything people in the books have, yet. People have said that before because one time Tom Hiddleston was like, yeah. Marvel hasn't called me in like two years, and then he's in Thor, Rag- Thor the, Ragnarok. So. The lead actress for She-Hulk went yeah. on record one time as being like I've not spoken to Marvel at all Marvel at I don't all. know where that came from y'all no are idea. crazy and then a couple months and later two weeks through probably like yeah a month later it was, oh she is actually she, she actually is she Hulk yes um, but we've also seen characters tease before that don't show up anywhere because we saw Adam Warlock <clears> at the <throat> end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 teased hasn't shown up since yeah um, or characters will show up but in a very limited role um, so again Will we see U.S. agents somewhere else? Maybe not. Maybe not. But, but fingers crossed at the same time. I'm, I'm thinking 
he he probably says that for now. You know, then again, they literally just announced Captain America four. Yeah. But I'm guessing he might he might be in there. You know, um, I'm noticing that like yeah, Wyatt Russell he he's been around for like years as an actor, but now I'm noticing he's well, it's Marvel of course, but he's getting more like viral type of I guess recognition playing sure. John Walker. You know, so a lot of hate, <clears throat> a lot of hate, which it just proves that he's doing a fantastic job as John Walker. Yeah, you know, don't you know, hate the character, don't hate, hate the, the character, actor, not the actor. You know, exactly, it just proves that the actor's doing a great job. Okay, idiots. But yeah, don't send, don't send him death threats. Don't send anybody death threats. <laughs> don't send anyone death threats. Jesus, that is so ignorant. shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Sam Wilson wouldn't send death threats, y'all. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. Don't be a don't be a John. Be a Sam. Be a Sam. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, oh that's my God. I hate what you're doing to Sam Wilson. It's especially <laughs> since it... Russell's like, bro, I'm like taking a dump on my toilet right now. Yeah, I'm not I'm, doing anything. To we Sam filmed Wilson. this role ages about? ago. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like I filmed that and... like eight months ago. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Uh, what was My I beard was say? fully grown like three weeks after we filmed it. <laughs> he is a very beardy man. Yes, he is. Very. You notice like, from like when they first showed him. I think the Russells are just a hairy the beardy Russell, yeah. family. <laughs> yeah, like, I think you're right. Man. I, I think because like, I noticed like when they first, from when they first showed him to when he bailed Sam and Buck, uh, Bucky out of jail. He just, like, heavy stubble. Yeah, constant 5 o'clock shadow. If you look at all his other acting gigs, the majority of them, he has a beard. That's, I was trying to think of... He has longer hair and a beard. Um, Kurt Russell, and I was like, well, he, he was shaved in, like, Big Trouble Little China. Yeah, um, a lot. S- Snake Plissken, I mean, he had 5 o'clock shadow as Snake Plissken, but the he thing, was shaved. The thing he had a the beard. The thing he had a big bushy beard. Yes, he had a big bushy um, beard, the thing. So, yeah, <laughs> but he's just a That's family true. who likes their bushy beards, I guess. That's true. Um, so that, well, listen, that was the the like, I was discussing this with my coworker Alan. Um, this episode and this series did a really good job hitting emotional beats very well. Yes, and I think that the char- the actors playing the characters hit those emo- again. Every scene with Sam and Isaiah broke my heart or yeah. made or made me smile and oh, joy oh that part uh, when like um, he hugged Sam at the end and he started crying Whew, boy that really got me yeah like um, I said I was in my break room I was like <sighs> that's I've that's, that's deep I was that's watching it stuff. before doing like some podcast really work it's cool. so, like I, I woke up at like 5 watched the episode from like 5 to 6 and then was just like on my own for a little bit everybody else in the house was asleep so it's a it's a good time to be like sad and emotional yeah and just be like <laughs> I'm just gonna revel in it just <laughs> this is so good it's so good it's such good stuff you um, know I, I still maintain that I don't think all of the plot elements line up very well agreed and we actually kind of predicted that because it was only 6 episodes you know that they've introduced so much plot into this series that we're not exactly sure if it's gonna get ang- untangled and by the end. And to be fair, and I, they tried their they tried their best. I feel like everything closes out decently well. Yeah, every yeah. everything's left open for potential follow up. Which Jesus Christ! I mean, all in all, like it, it ended the way they wanted to end. You know, like basically, like good job, Sam and Bucky as a family. Yeah. You know, that, like, it's almost like that was Steve's plan the whole time. You know, it's like, what's important? Legacy is important, but what's more important is family, basically. Yeah. And I, uh, I was gonna say before, um, I saw another, like, little post that, uh, while Sam and Bucky were, uh, seeing the psychiatrist, when, uh, Bucky told Sam, you know, we could go on do this thing and like never see each other again you know blah blah blah, you know that whole thing and then the picture underneath is them at the very end looking out at the pier you know like just that going from you know that line what bucky gave him at the psychiatrist you know to them being family there for each other exactly there for each other you can see it you know you really can even when bucky was leaving at the end of episode five and the pair of them being like we're not 
friends. Like, we were friends with a guy, and now the guy's gone, and we're, like, maybe co-workers-ish. Yeah. Eh. It's, it's very cool to see them now have reached a point where they are friends. Because even, even at the start of the show, when the psychiatrist was telling Bucky, like, Sam's been trying to call you and you don't pick up. Yep. Sam called Bucky to meet him at the GRC to resolve that situation. Bucky picked up, and admittedly, he said he would at the end of episode five, but it still shows some degree of character growth that he's willing to be there yeah. when Sam calls, as opposed to previously when Sam called and he didn't respond at The all. first interaction of him and Sam in the series is after Sam gave up the shield to the government, Bucky's like, why'd you give up that shield? He's yeah. like, well, good to see you too. Yeah, he's, <laughs> Bucky, he's not like, concerned about Sam as a person. He's, not. he's worried about that. He's shield. He's worried about that shield exactly yeah. because of the fact that he said that the shield was the only thing he had close to family. Yeah, you know, that's why because it wasn't about Sam. It was about Sam giving up the most the the closest thing that Bucky had to Steve. Yeah, you know, it really was, and you know, it's really cool that that developed into you know that that went from like just the solo object of like his closest family to taking that and kind of expanding it in a way and you know just not making not just Sam but like also like his sister that kind of hits on and then like the, that scene of you know playing with his nephews and everything you know just embracing like family yeah. being like basically like being free of like in a way sort of that burden you being know, free of the past. Yeah, finally. exactly. Being free of the past and even uh, kind of being free of like, you know, not, not not to make this sound like kind of like, you know, you know, cruel or anything, but like kind of being free of Steve's ghost in a way. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think that's fair. Kind of like that. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, I think, I think when he gave up that book, it wasn't just giving up. It wasn't having completed the list, which was a thing. Yeah. But I do think symbolically it's also a sign of, I don't, like, this helped Steve. Yeah. I don't need it anymore. Like, whatever it did for Steve's great. I'm done with it. I'm moving on yeah. with my life. And it, like and like you said, also represented by him removing the glove and just accepting this arm exactly. is part of who I am. Um, I did notice, um, I think it was when he was rescuing the GRC group, he immediately went in with his left hand as opposed to his right. Mm. And again, we we just established in the previous episode that he doesn't think of his left hand as a part of him. Um, because he's right-handed. Because he's yeah. right-handed. And so we got to... Which, again, like, why isn't that something you introduce at the start of the show and then have it be a thing throughout the show and then at the end of the show is when he gets the acceptance and we see character growth encapsulated throughout as opposed to between two episodes. Yeah, between like, two episodes. Why just two episodes? <laughs> <laughs> and especially, they probably thought those oh, bonuses, you know, we made them longer. Yeah, <laughs> and and especially like when we had uh, episode two, when he jumps out of the plane, and he uses the, <laughs> and he uses the arm to like punch through the trees. As protection. Yeah. Clearly, you know the arm's metal and it's defending you. I guess like it's it's one of those story inconsistencies that's just gonna it, it will forever bug the crap out of me. Um, I understand. Can't can't be helped, <laughs> but I'll always hate it. <laughs> um, but I I do think again overall I enjoyed the show um, it was great to see these characters in a more focused storytelling method than yes. just like here's Bucky sad in Wakanda and now he'll help kill people again <laughs> like it was cool or, or Sam as the joking sidekick on yeah. your left one more time um, it was cool to see him as a, as a leading man struggling with this overcoming yeah, his great. own doubts like, he, he, it's great because you can tell, like, even though, you know, some of the story structure in this was just, just, a tat, just a little off, you just tell that Marvel really, especially Kevin Feige, I think, really cared about establishing Sam Wilson as Captain America. Yeah. You know, and I, I honestly, I think he's a little secretly proud of picking anthony mackie in that role because of the fact that like what we said before is you know like anthony mackie was so obsessed with being anybody in the mcu he kept emailing marvel saying that he's like i don't give a fuck who i play i just want to be in the mcu and foggy was like you know you can play falcon you want to play falcon all right and boom 
Well, actually, with you... (laughs) Like, here we are now. With you mentioning the Falcon, we did get a shot of uh, Joaquin Torres uh, when Sam was doing his big speech. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Telling, making the making the speech of like you need to stand up and do something kind of thing, of course alluding to the fact that in the comics Joaquin becomes the Falcon for a time. Becomes the Falcon. Uh, in the comics, Joaquin is turned into a human Falcon hybrid, like he's <laughs> he is literally <laughs> like a a mutant kind of character. Wow, by who? Um, do you know? Oh, is that Remender? It yeah no this was this was Nick Spencer. Oh okay. It's fine. Um, Okay, yeah, yeah, this sounds, was after that sounds about right too. This was after Secret Wars with ah, Jonathan okay. Hickman. Um, gotcha. This was volume. This was Sam Wilson colon Captain America. Ah. Um, but yeah, that's he's he's literally like a Birdman. I don't remember who experimented on him. I want to say it was the Secret Empire, um, mm-hmm. but I could be wrong. Again, it's been a while since I read those comics. But I doubt we're gonna get that. Yeah, but, yeah I don't think know. we're gonna get never know. Birdman version yeah. of Joaquin Torres. <laughs> But he does have the old Falcon wings. Um, We've shown that he has tech-savvy skills. Yeah. um, Because he he was trying to help fix uh, Red Wing earlier in the show. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, We might see him as Falcon in Cap 4. Well, we might see him as Falcon. I'm kind of wondering if we might see him in some form of Young Avengers or if they do, like, a Champions series or something. Maybe. Um, In classically... I keep saying classically as if it's been canon for 50 <laughs> it's years. It's been like freaking like yeah, it's, decades. It's been like it's six been years ages. since the character debuted. He, that that golden age there, Ben. Yeah. Uh, the golden age of two years ago. <laughs> two years ago. Uh, Joaquin does join the champions, which at the time are made up of like Miss Marvel, um, Sam Alexander Nova, Young Cyclops, Amadeus Cho Hulk. Oh. Um, I feel Miles Morales. I was going to say, I feel like there's a big character I'm missing and it's, it's Miles. Yeah, that's pretty big. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I, I still, uh, Ironheart joins the champions, ah. uh, later on once she's more cemented. Um, so there, we're, again, we're going to see enough we're characters. Getting, like half of those characters. Yeah. And you yeah. could just be like, no, they're not going to be champions. They're going to be young Avengers. Cause that's a better brand. That's going to sell mm-hmm. better. Or you could do two things. Um, I'm, I'm wondering again, I could see this being I a new that's, young Avengers that's team, not up to Marvel. but I was thinking like, I don't know if. Would Marvel wait to introduce Miles Morales and then make Young Avengers? But then I thought I that might not be up to. Them. I know, yeah, I know. Um, it might be up to Sony. But oh, my brain's pooping out on me. No, actually, it wouldn't. Be Who's because... Spider Man? My brain wants to say Tom Jones, and I'm like, that's not even close. <laughs> And then my brain goes, Tom Hiddleston. And I'm like, that's Loki. Tom Holland? There we go, Tom Holland. <laughs> um, I know that Tom One Holland... One of the Toms. Yeah, he's a Tom. There's and Toms and there's Chris's. There's Tom's too a, many of Tom's them. Tom's everywhere. There's too many of them. Um, I know that he has said that Marvel and Sony have reached like yes. a better deal. A better deal, Than yeah. we've, we've heard of in a while. Yes. What that entails, nobody knows at this point. All, all we really know is we're getting a Spider-Man 3. Um... I, I feel I find it really hard to believe that Sony would let Marvel play with Miles Morales Spider Man. That's yeah. when Sony could shit out their own terrible I mean, movie. I mean, especially like with <clears throat> Spider Verse Two like coming in a couple of years. Yeah, you know, so yeah. Which, to be fair, brand confusion could only help Sony, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like, actually, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. You know, there I've seen so many people be like, "Man, are the Tobey Maguire movies like canon with the MCU?" And it's like. No, not at all. No. Wait, we're way no. off base with that one, man. You never know. Uh, yeah, at this it point... Be, it could be now because of No Way Home. Yeah. So... But we get a lot of Ralph Boner situations going <laughs> on. Uh, but but in any case, um, I, I'm... that Again, that's just one of those things where I'm like, are we teasing this character or are we going to do something with this character? I'm, I'm assuming we'll probably see John again um, because they have the whole setup with Val doing something exactly. for somebody. And I keep I keep saying this a lot throughout both WandaVision and Cap and Bucky. And I, I just... You don't bring in an actress like Julia Louis-Dreyfus just for two episodes. See, I, I still argue See, and sometimes still, you do. You still argue sometimes you do. But, like, I don't know, man. But, but when that character shows up and they go... I specifically have things that I'm going ah, to do. Ah, that's see? when I'm like, oh, 
Yeah. Ah, see, ah, see. Ah, but we were actually ah, supposed to get her before in ah, Black Widow. That's what I'm saying. We so, we know Val has at least got two appearances, which to me indicates that there's like a plan for her, as opposed to some of the characters in Wandavision who like their one thing was Wandavision. No, I would say like it. if if we don't get like Jimmy Woo again, like Agent Woo, like I, I get it. Yeah. If we don't get Darcy again, I, I get it. Yeah. You know. But well, I was referring more to the actress who'd been in Buffy. Um, who's that? Like, I I don't know the actress's name. She was the one that everyone thought would be Clea, the blonde woman. Because that's everybody oh, was like, oh, gotcha. Everybody was like, okay. no way would they cast this actress, but then have her do a, this bit background role, and then it was, no jokes on you. That's specifically what we had oh, her yeah, do. That's why? Thanks, yeah. everybody. Evan Peters too. Yeah. yeah. So I could, you know, again. I can see Marvel doing that kind of thing, but, again, knowing that Val shows up in Black Widow, which was meant to set something up, and Before then see it happen here, and now, a Winter Soldier. now we're getting it in reverse, but the basic idea remains the same. This feels like steps in a plot line, as opposed to a red herring, oh, we're, we're getting this thing, and then something else is going to happen. I don't think that's likely. We just don't know what Val is uh, part it could of. Be. She'll be she was to. just there to set up U.S. agent. It, and that's possible. Yeah. That's my my personal. I mean, I guess she would deem more as a background type of character because she's going to be a Nick Fury. Yeah, basically. Yeah, is what I, is my feeling. Maybe, but you know, then again, like we inherited that before. There were actors out there that was in Marvel that's like I hadn't heard from Marvel in a while. I don't know what's going on. And then yeah. before I know it, before you know, it, it's like oh well, Tom Hiddleston <laughs> went from uh, I haven't talked to Marvel in two years to being in Ragnarok to dying in Infinity War to coming back in Endgame and to now having his own series. Yeah, so show. yeah, so you know, ne- that's the thing with Marvel. It's the you best never part. know. That's the best. You part. never know. That's what I love the most. Um, we can either see all these actors again in Cat 4, or only two. Yeah. You never fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and that was, you know, going into you know going into Cap 2, I would never have expected to see the Falcon show up. No. Um, I never thought, I never thought the opening scene was Sam and being yeah. introduced to Steve Rogers. Yeah. You know, the opening scene <clears throat> of the Winter Soldier was that. We opened with, on your left. And that just, that the whole presidents for like, their relationship, their yeah. friendship. I didn't. I never thought we would see Arnim Zola again, and I didn't think we would see him as yeah, a like as technological a man. Yeah, um, exactly. Admittedly, he wasn't a robot suit in a trench coat, which yeah. is my favorite version he was of the Arnim algorithm. Zola. But that, but, like, but again, that's a cool to me. That's a cool modern a cool take nod. on him, yeah. without being like we're going to lean into the six, silly '60s sci-fi thing. That's fine. Um, no, like, granted, like I said, it's, it's so hard to predict. Which it is, is. The, again, for us, this is a lot of the fun, is and, we don't yeah. know. And granted, to me, we only got Zemo in his mask, like, one time. Once. With no Once. explanation With for why. no explanation. <sighs> he put it on, he killed a couple of dudes, and then he took it back off when he saw the car, and that was it. Yeah. That's all he wore it for, and that was actually disappointing, because it made such a big deal about it. With all the advertisements for the series, yep. you know, he specifically, it was not Daniel Brule, it was Daniel Brule in the Zemo mask. Yep. And it was important in that scene where you actually saw it in the car, and he and looked you, at and it. And you lingered on it. And you lingered it on it. It wasn't like exactly. he just pulls a, a, a baklava out of, balaclava? Out of, a, out of a bag, and he's just like, I'll put a yeah. mask on. This isn't exactly. the Boondock Saints. He had like, this mask prior. Yeah. It was something to him, and you specifically put the camera right on it to to basically tell you like this could, this this could possibly thing. be a threat this, thing. this could possibly be a threat so he grabs it and you're like oh shit Zemo with the mask shit alright but then you know it's not really what, a threat what does it mean apparently uh, nothing because uh, we don't nothing. ever we don't ever talk about it apparently nothing yeah because we were like oh shit as entertaining as Zemo was I thought his character would give us more yeah you know he was he was there to basically be like you know I am Zemo you know I have information but it's, it it guess feels, what I have the information and you don't it so feels I'm gonna like blackmail you into giving me it, a chance from from a structure standpoint it feels like Zemo's role in this was to make you enjoy Zemo enough to use him somewhere else exactly as opposed to have him fit within the narrative and give him an arc that works that feels natural or or even 
to have his actions within the show reveal something to Sam or Bucky, which exactly. really is what a character should do, because those are your lead characters. That's who we care about. Yeah. Even if even if Zemo doesn't arc, Sam and Bucky should arc, and he should show them something about the world, exactly. about their morals, whatever that is. We, um, we already do how dangerous he could be. Yeah. So I was a little disappointed that they didn't show us how much more dangerous he could be. You know, that's that's what I was thinking we were going to get with Zemo. You know, the the Baron the Baron Zemo. You know, he was Helmet Zemo in Civil War. Okay, well, he revealed he's a Baron. He's Baron Zemo. He's officially Baron Zemo in this. And that's what I thought we were going to get. Official Baron Zemo with the name and the mask and everything else. Even the little furry collar coat. We, we got all that. He, he looks like Baron he Zemo looks pretty like Baron good. Baron Zemo, exactly. And he I, looks like Baron Zemo pretty good, but we didn't get that Zemo from the comics. That's, I think, which I thought we were going to get. I think but. we wanted A-list, top-tier, Machiavelli villain Zemo. Like, yeah. I, I think emotionally, I, I know definitely for me, like, I wanted Zemo to be the brain behind all of this. Like, I wanted there to be... Me a, too. I wanted there to be a final moment where he's like, I've been manipulating the power f- the, the power broker and the Flag Smashers and the GRC and to some, re- some degree, this. Bucky and Sam a little bit too, just so that I could set things up so that I could do whatever the next thing that I'm doing is. It 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 is a little disappointing to see him just be like, I'm just going to manipulate yeah. the, the thing that's happening right now. Yeah. And then I thought he'd be like, get arrested. You know, I thought he'd be like, you know what? Prison isn't so bad after all. Why? Because I can come in and out anytime I can. Well, please. and that's, I, you know, I do think we get that. <laughs> like, uh, I, thought, with, I thought that kind of, I mean, you know, I guess like mentally they were supposed to make you think, hey, you know, even though he's in prison, he still finds ways to technically get out. Yes. You he, know? he shows that he can still influence the world. Um, I Again, I think we just wanted more of an influence from him. Um, again, I would have loved something if he was like, I wanted I wanted Sam to be Captain America because of this reason. Yeah. And it's something that I could manipulate or exploit at some point in the future. And it doesn't feel like that, especially when you, again, we got that moment with um, Bucky and Zemo in episode five where Bucky chooses not to kill him. Like, that makes it feel like Zemo's whole motivation was getting killed at some point. Yeah. Like, he just wanted to be reunited with his family. And I don't mind suicidal Zemo, but if that's your end result, like, you had better chances of getting shot during the firefight. Like, yeah. why did you save them then? What does this gain you? If your end goal is death, yeah. you fucked up. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I figured also, like, I don't know if he was blipped or not, but five years later, and that's kind of still your thought process... You know, I mean, he does have just he's in theory he has just been sitting in a prison cell going, God, it sucks that my God. family's dead. God, it sucks that my family's dead. <laughs> but the living. Are but it's dead. great to be rich. But it's great to be a barrel. Exactly. Yeah. I, again, yeah, it's... I feel like with Sharon, there's there's a, a there's a gap in storytelling that I don't think really got taken into account. It would make more sense if somehow Zemo was behind it all. And it, and that's the thing. It, it would have been a little more comfortable with that result, so that way we can be like, Zemo was behind it. I'm not exactly sure how, but that sounds like Zemo. Yeah. So like, so okay, that's, yes, Zemo like was behind Zemo all, that do. dastardly motherfucker. How did he do it? They're probably not going to answer that question, what? but he did it somehow. That's Zemo for you. What I would have liked more is if Zemo had learned that John was Captain America and John got a hold of the serum and he didn't want another super soldier to be Captain America. Mm. So he manipulates events to bring down John and get the shield back to Sam because Sam's just an ordinary man. And you could even play up the idea of uh, if that shield's in the hands of an ordinary man, at least he's not a super soldier and an ordinary man's going to be a lot easier to kill if I need to kill him as opposed to a super soldier kind of thing like what, set, whatever benefits him yeah in, in a, a good way to set up Sam's character but then also and, and you could still have him go through the growth of I need to learn to accept this responsibility where Zemo is still benefiting from it even because that's that's perfectly what Zemo does in the comics it's oh sure save the world stop my current plan 
but in stopping my current plan, you're going to do this thing, which is good for me as well, and then I'll come up with another plan in six months. See you all later. Two Bye. steps ahead. Yeah. Um, Ten s- steps ahead. So I, I do agree that I'm, I'm a little bummed Zemo wasn't more mastermind E. Yes. But again... Yeah, mastermind E. That's we had. Yeah, we had we had Zemo, we had Power Broker, we had John, we had Lamar, we had Bucky and and Sam. Flag like, Smashers. The, there were so many. All the Flag Smashers. All of the Flag Smashers. We had so and then Val's introduction. Lamar. We had so many characters doing so many things. Um, again, I I do think this got a little more muddled in a way that Wandavision didn't, despite having a a good number of characters. I think that was the thing. What Wandavision is like, they literally were cast as extras. Everyone had a very specific role. Exactly. Explicitly, explicitly in WandaVision. Yes. Um, where where this was a little bit looser. Um, I'm, definitely I'm going to have to at some point rewatch this whole thing and do more of a like breakdown. Even if I just do it for myself just to yeah. be like what what doesn't sit well with me? Why doesn't this work as well? Because um, it's like I was trying to think about it at work the other day after I watched the episode and I was like it doesn't feel like they took a two-hour movie and then stretched it to six hours. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like they took one plot and made a thing. It feels like they tried to make a show and that kind of feels why, like, here's a plot line and then it stops at episode three and then the new plot line starts and then here's a plot line over here which is episodes, like, two through four but then here's plot lines in episodes five and six. Like, it doesn't feel like an arc made up of these threads that all pull together at the end. Yeah. It feels like all these bits and pieces just shoved together to ultimate, it, it feels more like a poorly made hamburger than it feels like a, a well executed yeah. something. That like, we're not that exactly sure how we're gonna get to end, to the end, but we're gonna get you there. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and like I said, emotionally, it did a it did a really good job. So it's, it, it did it's do a really good job emotionally, complain. and you can tell that they wanted to introduce different elements in the Captain America. Um, type of legacy yeah. from the comics that of corner what was, of exactly, the MCU that corner of the MCU of what was important and um, you know they did do a, a pretty interesting um, job in you know contemplating what exactly it would be like to be a black Captain America and introducing Isaiah Bradley yeah. into that process I thought that was very interesting because if people don't know in the comics you know um, the Isaiah Bradley story and Sam Wilson being Captain America um, it's like maybe two decades, a decade or two, decade and a half apart. Yeah. So those stories don't really coincide with each other. That's why it was actually, you know, a pretty interesting job that they did to basically have those two storylines coincide and basically have one mean something over the other. Yeah. You know, I thought that was a pretty decent job. You know, and yeah, it made me think like, huh, I guess, you know, I guess it would make sense to ponder, you know, like what would it be like to be a black Captain America from the opinion of, you know, a super soldier, you know, a black super soldier who was just treated awful in the time he was a super soldier, you yeah. know, as opposed to the time now where, you know, yeah, there would be some people with almost the same negativity back then. But at the same time, nowadays, there are so many more people who would support that, that, you know, that Sam did what he did because he knew it was something important, you know. There's nothing having to do with color of your skin or anything. It was more about a symbol. It was more about a symbol, you know, more about a symbol and doing what's right, you know. That's, I do have to say, that was probably one of the, the problems that I had as the GRC plotline was resolving is, you know, the United States installs John Walker as the new Captain America. So clearly the United States thinks it owns the Captain America brand at the very least. And admittedly, we do have Val show up and she's like, the legalities of who owns the shield are kind of murky. So like, it's a gray area, but I still don't think the United States government would just go, well, you get a pass. I guess, Sam, like, John clearly (laughs) didn't work out. I guess you could be Captain America. Yeah, I I was really expecting a moment of, like, the GRC guy to be like, you know, thank you, we appreciate you saving us, great job, we'll take the shield back whenever you're ready. And then Sam goes, no, you don't get this back anymore. I gave the shield to y'all. Yeah, you (laughs) don't own Captain America, nobody does, is the thing. And I'm gonna be it from now on. Again, just a little bit more of that Sam taking ownership of the role. Um, 
I don't know if you could have fit that in terribly well. Um, I would love to have seen John again. I would like to have seen more of a like John, not passing the torch, but acknowledging that accepting Sam's a better fact, fit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Accepting that fact, not just. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned nod because that's basically all they gave each other was a nod. Yeah, it it, it really <laughs> stuck out to me. Um, after John came out as the U.S. agent, um, during one of I think I think it was when Val was leaving. Like John does one of the like, like head twitches that he 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 had started to do after Lamar's death. Like mm. it's, it's, I was like, are you, are you tr- like, I don't, are you showing me that he has like PS PTSD or like head trauma? Is know. this just a nervous tick? Even that he, that he seems happy. Cause you know, he kept saying he was back. I'm he back. like happy puppy dog. Yeah. Happy. Like this did not feel like, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, Lamar's dead, he's like don't call me Val. He's like, yeah. oh, you got it. He's like, and he's like, I'm back. And, and I, yeah, he seems so happy. And, and I do wife, like, his wife was with him and everything. I do kind of like that, that, like, he doesn't hide anything from his wife. Yeah. You know, I, I do like I that. I agree. And even though he killed somebody, his wife still supports him. Well, that's that's been one of my favorite arguments seeing online with people decrying John's murder of the one Flag Smasher. And then a lot of people getting online being like, the Avengers have been killing people. Like, in all of these movies. Why do you think Zemo has a freaking agenda? Yeah. Vendetta against the Avengers. Yeah, Iron Man killed a bunch of people. The Avengers have killed a bunch of people. Like, nobody in this, to, to, as far as I can tell, has their hands clean. Yeah, they just didn't do it in front of a bunch of yeah, people and cameras. But it's very interesting <laughs> that we still have that idea of, like, superheroes are meant to be more than this. Yes. Um. So, But, but I agree. I love that John's treated more as a soldier. Um, his wife is used to the idea of he went to combat. He did kill people, mm-hmm. but he was killing people who ostensibly are bad people that needed to be stopped. Remember him and Lamar even had that conversation yeah. before he took the sol- super and, soldier serum. And as far as as far as they're concerned, and I'm assuming his wife is concerned, this situation was the same kind of thing. You killed a terrorist. Could they have been saved? Maybe. But in that situation, you couldn't. That's how it is. Yeah, that's how um, it is. I, I do like that she didn't like leave him or dump him or like get super upset like it again keeping the focus on john um i i really liked for for whatever reason i like that john is still cocky enough to call val val yeah despite the fact that she's like don't actually call don't actually call me val thank you val don't 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 call call me there oh yeah she's like don't call me val it's like oh yeah that's right you got it john has no filter yeah and if he if he's like i said it it, that's a perfect comic book john kind of thing of like don't call me val I'm going to call you Val every second I can, just because it bugs you. Exactly. Fuck you. I'm going to call you Val anyway. That's really, it's really perfect for John. That's great. I know a lot of, because I saw stuff like, am I supposed to like this guy now? And I'm like... I think that's the thing. I, I think it's supposed like, to be mixed. I, I think it's supposed to be mixed, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do. And that's actually, they, they did their job. I, I think They really with, did. With John, with Wanda... I think the idea is that they're showing us that humans are more complicated than good and bad, that good people can make mistakes and bad people can help, like Zemo. Yeah. Um, we, you, like I said, we fucking episode three. I love Zemo. Yeah. And he tried to kill yeah. my favorite group of characters. <laughs> like, why? Why do I love Zemo? Apologies. And it's it's because people are more complicated than good and evil. Turkish delight. Um, Irresistible. And especially. One of the big critiques of the MCU has been that the villains are too one note or the villains aren't very interesting. But when you have villains who have more than one motivation or more than one side to them, you need to have heroes who have more than one motivation and more than one side to them. And it's again, it's cool to see that for me reflected in in both sides of this equation. Wow, my voice is going. I think the the more the the more important villains are the ones on a more I guess personal level. Yeah. You know, I guess you can say. Well, like I said, the, the, the best villains are the ones where you go, that kind of makes sense. Even if you don't agree with their mm-hmm. methods. And that's, you know, they, they tried to do it with Carly, and I agree. I don't think they did a very good job. John, for me, felt like a better villain. Zemo could have been a better villain. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, when you talk to somebody and they're like, man, I love Killmonger, because he was right. I love, you know, Thanos, I would say, Thanos is a character who was presented very charmingly. Yeah. Despite his plan actually being really stupid. Um. Okay. So, like, I want to talk about, like, not necessarily Carly, but I want to talk about, like, the actress that plays Carly. Uh, overall, watching this past episode and, like, thinking about the series as a whole, 
the actress, she didn't necessarily do it for me. She was just rather just very stiff and kind of wooden in a lot of parts. Because I'm just watching, because I, I kind of try to watch the rewatch the episode like on my way here. And yeah, you tend to watch the episodes. Yeah, I try to watch them multiple twice. times so I can yeah. gather even more information. <clears throat> but like, just you know, um, you know, she she did her job, you know. But like, just her, you know, her, her delivery on things. It's like you know, whenever she said she feels like this whenever she's mad she feels like this whenever she's on the phone she talks like this you know whenever she has reasoning she talks like this you know sure whenever she get, tries to give a speech she talks like this there's no i don't hear any anger i don't hear any sadness i don't hear any other type of up and down emotion she's just like this throughout almost the whole thing and uh, to me that kind of pertains to the fact that like i didn't really have much emotional interest in her as a character. Sure. And I think it is because of the actress's sort of wooden type of portrayal I'm... of this villain that's supposed to be in a way sort of have a tragic yeah. and like kind of emotional type of yeah. background, you, you know? You're supposed to feel about her in general like we felt about Killmonger. Yeah. Again, this idea of you're supposed to thimp- sympathize but go, but your methods are bad. Yeah. And look um, how much of a difference that is because, you know, Michael B. Jordan, yes, he's more, he's much yeah. more well known, but at the same time, the reason being is because he's such a fantastic actor. I, I was going to argue against you, and then when you started saying the lines without, like, a, an emotional inflection, like, I, like, there's a degree at least of I can't argue. Um,. Because I I, I want to say my biggest... Because you can't necessarily say that, like, that's how they wanted her character to be. Yeah. The, the, but uh, the biggest... Uh, again, I, I have the same problems with Carly that I feel like I have with, with John and Sharon, where, like, I don't feel like your story makes very good sense. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I like the idea that she's from a... a I like the idea that she was from a group of characters who flourished to some degree when the world went through the blip. Yeah. I like the idea that now that the world is trying to put the status quo back in place, these people are being impacted and they're being hurt by it. And she chooses to defend them. I like that. Um, I like the ever increasing, oh, you want to hurt us. We are going to hurt you back um, from a, from a character standpoint. But the, the emotional beats never lined up to me. Yeah, it's see it's the it's um, the delivery, you know. Well, and it's it's the same kind of thing where like the I'm thinking of like her when she does her interaction with Sam in episode 4 um when they're talking. Yeah. yeah. I, I liked that scene. Like I thought the the rap the rapport between the two characters worked really well. So did I. I um, didn't think she, you know, she didn't particularly have to be too emotional in that scene. Yeah. It was them conversating. Yeah. And, and I, that's why overall I thought she pre- did a pretty decent decent job in yeah. that scene but the the trick became the trick became i need i need a believable escalation from we're robin hood and we're gonna steal stuff to let's murder people and not even just murder people yeah. but like let's I didn't murder s- lots of people exactly i didn't see that you know physically necessary change in her tone or demeanor yeah to become more ruthless in character yeah and even, you, you know, know, I'm and I'm trying to think, like, again, like, with Killmonger, like, the second Killmonger shows up, he's he's wearing street clothes, like, he looks like a, a just a person you would see on the street for the most part, and then he starts killing people immediately. Changes into that armor. Changes into his armor, steals the mask, puts the mask on, I'm just feeling it. Um, and even his interactions with the rest of the Wakandans and everything, um, you can, f- like, there's an underlying rage there that I... F- you can feel. Um, it's not until he encounters like the the royal the royal family when they go when he goes into the throne room, you know. Yeah. And he starts to see everybody, you know. There, y'all living comfortably up in here, you know. Yeah. He start you start to see that anger, and then finally, when one of you know when when the man asks him, "Who are you?" You know, because he kept asking like, "Tell him who I am," you know ask me who I am and when he finally reveals you know that he's into Jobu like boom anger 
anger starts. Yeah. Found my dad with Panther Claws and like just yeah. boom, just let all the anger just gets let out. When all the anger helps him fucking kill t- kill T'Challa. Yeah. You know when he's saying that like I ki- basically killed all these fe- people so I can fucking come here and I can kill you. And I and my I feel sole purpose in life was to fucking kill you and take this motherfucking throne. And both of these characters are supposed to be violent, to at least to some degree violent. Yeah. Um, extremists. And Very it doesn't. Extremist. It never feels like Carly reached a point where that made sense to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I like, did. I, and, and, again, and it's the same problem I have with everybody in this. I, I feel like feel everyone's. Her, I didn't feel her purpose. Yeah. That's know? and and I feel like they they tried her to give us. Purpose. They tried to give us the uh, uh, Maria Donia died um, I'm, uh, because of poor conditions in the camps. I believe. No, I believe so. Which, <clears throat> which would be great if I was invested in that relationship at all before the death happened. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe if we saw the conditions in a camp when the show opened. And kind how of that, flash, sort of a flashback type of thing. E- either a flashback, or you said it before things begin to escalate. Yeah. Um, I, I don't because it because otherwise you're just being told, oh, she meant a lot to them, and the closest we get to see to that scene is like the funeral scene. Um, but even then, that still doesn't feel like a a need to start murdering people. Yeah. Like it, it feels like Carly's decision to start blowing things up and killing people comes out of nowhere. It comes out of nowhere. And it, and even the rest of the Flag Smashers feel reluctant to go yeah. along. Even in episode six, when she's like, even if we all have to die, that's fine. And they're like, oh. Yeah, she says that. <laughs> she says that right yeah, right after she says, well, if we have to kill the hostages, we will. Yeah, everybody else looks and, around and they were at each all other like, going like, what the fuck, this was never the plan, are you sure? yo. Are you sure we need to kill them? like, all right, little psycho girl, this yeah. wasn't the plan. And she kind of has to force them to go, one people, one world. Yeah. And they're just like... They're hesitant to <gasps> say it. Sure, yeah, one people, one world, let's do it. Like, it it doesn't, again, if if you're going to portray her as an extremist, I don't, I don't think they did a very good job from a writing perspective. I don't know if the actress didn't help with that. Yeah. Um, again, in, in general, I don't think she did a bad job. I think she got kind of a, a hacked up storyline more than anything else. I think it was a little bit of both. Because I, I did like when she was fighting Sam. Um, it occurred to me in episode six, especially after that speech, when she was like, even if we die, the movement's strong enough yeah. to live without us at this point. Um, Carly had reached the same point that Zemo had reached where I think Carly went into this wanting to die. She wanted Sam yeah, to could, kill her. Yeah, I could definitely see that. This this was suicide by superhero. Yeah, that's why she, you know, to the rest of the Flag Smashers yes. in that point, she's like, I don't care if we die as long as the job gets done. I think she was so angry at the world and so upset at the loss of, of Donya that she would rather die than continue to go on, which I, I don't mind that grief as a motivator, um, but I do mind that grief in terms of I don't think this is what Maria Donia would have wanted. Yeah. And they and they pull Sam tries to pull that, but then they just completely skim by to just go like, no, I've got to kill people. I've got to like it. Like at least with John, John was motivated by the death of Lamar, but it made sense. He didn't get Lamar's killer. Exactly. This doesn't feel like it connected nearly as well. Again, for for something that was playing with this idea of like relocation camps being a big plot line, we never got to really. Like, we got one look into those camps, and I mean, they looked like bad apartments, but they didn't look like people were necessarily living in Suffering, squalor. exactly. Yeah. Um, there was, like, one, I think, one news article that was, like, tuberculosis broke out in a, in a GRC camp, they were which getting taught. happened. Yeah. They you were know? being educated. They were being they, educated. We, we had the one scene where they were like, you've got food supplies for up to six months, so you're not feeding people, but nobody looked underfed. Yeah. Uh, again, it looked like they were in poverty. Yeah, and like, I I don't know if maybe Marvel didn't want to go that far, yeah. um, or they or they couldn't, or they didn't have the budget. Um, but again, I I really feel like that portion of this plot line is a, a piece not well structured to yeah. fit into this puzzle, um, and it, it feels like the kind of thing that you would be able to explore better in a TV show because you could focus on it. Maybe you could have focused on it if you had less moving pieces all interacting and clashing with each other all at the or, same time. Or if you had two more episodes. Yeah. Or if... I, it's just, I don't know. This it's is just me. This is, li- like, literally, this is going to, like, eat at me. I'm going to have to rewatch this show and, like, pitch my I rewrite. Agree. Um, and the, and I, I don't know. Like, somebody put online that, like, 
I don't know if I go that far, but thinking about it, like the whole like uh, mid credit scene where Sharon Carter, she's officially like reinst- reinstated, and she's officially like a uh, power broker motherfucker now, <laughs> basically. So my post it online, it's like. You know, that reveal was, like, one of the worst end credit scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm like, hey, well, because <laughs> it didn't have to be. Well, if, if it... And, he, and you're waiting for an end credit scene, and you're like, oh. Yeah. She's reinstated? That's what Sam has been telling her all this time. I And I did like that I mean, both, that Sam did bring up, I keep my promises. Yeah. Um, which was something that I had called him out on. I want to say in episode four, I was like, you do it. There's no pardon for anybody. You just went home. You just yeah, went home. Come yeah, on, guy. Don't forget. Home. So it, it was cool to see that get acknowledged, yeah, at least. Yeah, it was. Um, but I, I do agree. Um, that is probably one of the like least shocking mid- end credit lead-ins to anything else. And again, especially not knowing if we're going to see Sharon again. Yeah. Are we going to see the Power Broker again? And there was no other mid credit scene in any other yeah. episode. It, you know. it would have been it would have been cooler if, I don't know, we had seen her talking to somebody that we knew or that was setting yeah. up something specifically setting up something that led into something else like it's possibly um, in the future like that little scene could be much more relevant yeah you know but right now to us it doesn't really mean much yeah there's so, so there, we'll see there could be a wider mcu context that we don't have yet um yeah so like you said that that could be a thing but this <clears throat> this felt more like it should have been like when the scroll revealed itself to monica and she was like you want to go, you wanna go back up? See you. Yeah. This yeah. this felt like that should have been that kind of moment where you just put it in the episode and don't do an end credit yeah. scene, which would have been fine. Um, like like you said, if possibly if there was some sort of reveal as to who we knew she was talking to, and it was like I don't know, like someone like Justin Hammer or something. Yeah. And that'll set up like maybe Armored Wars or something because we did get Rhodey in the yeah. first episode. I thought that. I just fucking made that up. I actually thought that would be kind of cool. Yeah, that would, that would have Just, been sweet. Yeah, her I'd, talking to Justin Hammer or whatnot. I would honestly have been happy Sam Rockwell? if you switched out the U.S. agent scene with this power broker scene mm. and just end with John walking out in the suit. In the suit. And actually, he's just like... That would have been cool. This feels right. Or something yeah. along those lines. And then boom, cut to your the rest of your credits. Yeah. That would have ended much more ominously. Like, and okay, turn, Val. Like, don't call me Val. Yeah. You know, like, I'm back. I'm back. And then it ends. I thought, actually, yeah. Yeah, I, actually, I, that would have been pretty cool. That would have been a more like exciting moment for me. Um, yeah, because I would have been because if it was a mid credit scene, be like, John was taking us so long. We'd be like, oh, we're gonna see the U.S. agent yeah. suit. Oh, All we, right. we we thought we were done, but we, we ain't done. We ain't done. We ain't oh. done. We're gonna see the U.S. agent suit. Yeah, you're right. That was more of a um, fan moment. Yeah, and and yeah. typically I feel like that's what a mid credits or an end credits yes. thing normally is. Yes. It's a fan thing. It's a fan thing. Yeah. It's it's meant to be a nod and a wink to you, the nerd who stuck around through the whole credits. You know, the f- so you sat through the entire credits. Like <laughs> it's it's meant to be a nod and a wink to the fans and being like, oh, the thing you guessed at episode three that Sharon Carter's the power broker. Yeah, you were right. Like it would be like revealing Agatha at the end credits yeah. scene of what of of Wandavision. Like that's just. Like no. if you like if you <clears throat> end like if you went from you know Sam and Bucky looking out from the pier to that power broker scene and then her talking to someone on the phone and then it ended and credits came on. I understand you wanted to yeah, do that'd Sam, be fine. Yeah. I understand you wanted to do Sam and Bucky and then do the title reveal Captain America and the Winter Soldier, but that could have worked almost as well, like with the Sharon ending. Because of the fact that oh, you know, she's basically has she's even she has even more power now. Well, you know, and uh, just real quick, yeah, go for it, go for it. And then you go from there to now, the mid credits. Now we're riffing. Now I got something. And <laughs> yeah, we are. But then you know you come out with the mid credit scene, and it is a John Walker scene, and you have all that the suit reveal, which would be pretty awesome. And then um, you know at the end when he's like, "Thank you, Val," blah blah blah, and he's like, "You know, I'm back." I'm back. And then it ends. Then you're more of the, you know, perceptive of like, oh, he's back, yeah. which means, and then they announce Captain America 4. It's like, oh, John could be in Captain America 4. Yeah. You know, he's saying he's back, you know? I think that would have been a cool, like, boom, I'm back, I'm back, boom. Yeah. Then more credits. And you'd be like, oh, he's back. That means he could be in future installments. 
you know? Why else would they give him the suit yeah. and save it for the end? Like, I thought that would have been pretty you, cool mid credit scene. You could have done Sam and Bucky get their, their peer moment, and they look, out into the, they look out into the future, and it looks beautiful, and God thinks you're great in America. And then you move over to the Sharon Carter scene. She walks out, and you could do something where, like, she walks out and, like, goes down the hallway or something like that, and then she gets on the phone and she's like, hey, line up the buyers. I'm about to get access to some crazy some amounts crazy of information, shit. guys. You're not going to believe this. Like, shit, be yeah. ready. And then she's like, I got to go. And she hangs up and she walks into the next room and there's a press conference and it's Sam getting ready to be revealed as like the official new Captain America. Mm. And like, and that's something where you could like, she walks into the room and like the camera goes around the corner and you see Sam in the suit. And that could have been the moment where he goes, see, I keep my promises. promises. And then it cuts. And then it cuts. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Do your credits, <clears throat> cut to the U.S. agent, who's down the hall getting his own press con or not getting his own press conference, but that's that's his the inversion, reveal. where now Sam is being revealed to the public on this huge stage, and he's, but he's secretly being revealed yes, as he's, U.S. agent. You're, you're no yeah. longer going to be in the spotlight, buddy, but you're still going to be a thing, and yeah, then you do your, boom, be a thing. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, I'm back. U.S. agent will back, appear in back, whatever. Boom. Um, and That's, credits. Oh, I like I like the way that feels. Yeah, I like the way that feels. Too. I like the way that I like it. feels. It was, you know, because of the fact that I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, that was the end credit scene. Okay, but then the guy was like, uh, the what I read online was like, that was like the worst end credit scene. I'm like, I don't want to be too harsh, but like, yeah, it wasn't like you know, ooh ah. Yeah. So yeah, bringing up that like if that you if they saved that U.S. agent moment for the mid end credit scene. That would have been a ooh awesome type of moment. Yeah, I I I personally think the shawarma is my least favorite just because it's joke, and it, it but but it's also, also the fact that we knew they put it in there like not even a few days before the yeah. actual movie premiered. And it's so. and it's a super cute scene, and it's a it cool way a to show scene. the characters as human. But in terms of was it worth waiting through all of the credits to get there? No, not really. It and, was just like a weed moment, and at basically. Least, and then, to be fair, at least then you get the so you waited through the end credits, credits. joke, which was great from Homecoming. Yeah, yeah that which, was great. Which was a cool way that, to like smoke you. That was a, an awesome like through line through the movie, basically. Yes. You know that like you saw Captain America in those you know ridiculous type of like PSA PSAs. videos. This is great. And then at the end, <clears> they're like. So we're going to talk about a little thing called patience. Yep. You know, like, you waited throughout this whole thing. And like, sometimes, sometimes you wait well, you and wait just nothing and comes just of nothing it. Nothing comes. God, you know? I'm going to have to rewatch that I when we finish too. wrapping this up. I know, me too. It's oh, great. That's great. Um, How many of these do we still have left? Remember he says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. He's like, he's done. He's like, how many of these we still got left? That's and then, great. And then it ends. That's great. That's fantastic. I love that just a little speck of like human element yeah. in there, you know? Like it's Cap, but then even Cap is like, well, even, am I not done yet? And it's, even, <laughs> and it's also a little bit funny because he's doing a PSA about patience as he's asking to wrap this up. Wrap this up. There's, there's exactly. a beautiful layer of irony. It is. Of, it's a very human. Beautiful. And the fact that Cap, out of everybody else, is talking about patience because he basically had 70 years of patience. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's. All around, that's that's it, great. It, it was, I say it's one of those perfect little everything perfect about that moment. Little everything great. moments, exactly. Uh, so we're, we're at an hour and forty five. Oh, which admittedly shit. we've got a, a little bit that I'm gonna have to edit out because we had some interruption. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we should probably wrap up. I agree. Um, I, I believe we basically have gone through everything. Yeah. We. So it was it was shit. definitely more of a linear season finale yeah. just a straightforward type of episode this was a very A to B to C yeah close everything out wrap it all up kind of yeah I would um, say a good 60 to 70 percent of it was like the whole wrap up action sequence with the GRC and everything yeah, yeah. that's the so. like I said overall in, in terms of emotion emotional stuff this series hit for me mm-hmm. which to some degree is more important to me than your plot making sense um I think it was James Cameron had said something along the lines of like, as long as a movie feels right, even if it doesn't make sense, that's what you need. That's what will sell a movie. Yes. Um, and I to, think that'll be his legit excuse when Avatar two to five <laughs> comes out. But anyway, <laughs> but 
that's that's a lot for me of this is it Bang, it zoom. felt right for a lot of it the character beats hit um the emotional stuff that was great like i said i feel like the it actors was. overall did a really good job supporting a very weak script but that's fine uh, a little bit yeah you know we're we're through it now um we've got loki in a month june june june, june. yeah so we got Loki's the next one. So you guys aren't going to see us for a while, for a couple of like weeks, a good probably month and a half, um, month, month and a half. I don't know. Unless, unless when Black Widow comes out, we may do like That's a review July. kind of thing. That is July. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> keep up, man. They delayed it again. Yeah, I keep, I keep. That's what you know. I was mentioning that earlier. Is you know, I know a lot of people are wondering why we have such a huge gap between, you know, Falcon and Winter, Captain America and Winter Soldier and Loki and I told Ben I believe it's because of the fact that we were supposed to get Black Widow at the beginning of May and that way that would have been Falcon and Soldier in April Black Widow in May then Loki in June but because they delayed Black Widow till July that's why there's such a huge gap so we were supposed to get Marvel April Marvel May Marvel June but Unfortunately, we're skipping May and going Marvel July. And I also believe they're like, oh, you know what? Marvel July. Hey, two months after that, we're going to get Shang-Chi, you know? And then two months after that, you're probably going to get the Eternals. I can't remember. It, but, Eternals so far is still on track for November. For November. Release date. I think it was then, November 5th. And then, okay. And then like a month and a half after that, we're getting Spider-Man yeah. Christmas time. Well, and we should still so, get Hawkeye this year as well. Yeah. Later this year. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we, we've got hits coming. Because we're getting four Marvel movies this year. That's what they claim they were going to let us know. That's what they claim. So, you know, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals. And, and, and what if? Spider-Man. What if is supposed no to drop home. some at some and point this what, year as and well? And what if is supposed to drop Yeah, the animated series. Too. Yeah. So we're... Unless they delay that, unless, we'll see. I don't think they'll delay... I, the only thing I think they would delay would be movies, and that's because of the COVID situation. And Hollywood seems to have reached a point after Godzilla vs. Oh, oh, Kong I think that they I, don't I care think anymore. I think I meant movies. My bad. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think we're probably on track for everything coming out on time. Um, so yeah, folks, yeah. you won't, you probably won't see us until Loki hits. Until Loki hits. In the um, room, so un- unless something yeah. else drops a hot trailer, the only reason I didn't ask if you wanted to do a Shang Chi trailer is because there's not really a lot in it. There's um, not a lot in it, and I actually thought about asking you if we want to do like a thing for the teaser. No, really. so um, if, yeah, that's cool. If if, if, a, if a bigger say, trailer comes out and it has more, which I believe will be at the time that Black Widow comes out, then absolutely, it's going to be like the official trailer for Shang Chi. I would be fine with that. So, but like I said, there there wasn't a whole lot. Like Shang Shang Chi yeah. so far just looks like a very standalone film, which I'm fine with. I'm very fine with as well. Um. But yeah, I, I, I like the trailer in general. I'm, I, I like the trailer as well. I've um, never been more excited for Shang-Chi than I am right now. Yeah, same here. Um, I love the fact that uh, Marvel was like, you know what? Kung Fu Epics. You know, we're fans of Kung Fu Epics. Shang-Chi? Who doesn't not like a, a good people. Kung Fu movie? Exactly. And they were probably like, Shang-Chi, you know, that's a that's a Kung Fu character. You know what? We know what we're going to do. And it's, it's Asian-oriented. Shit. Guess what we're going to do? Part two. Two birds with one stone. We're going to come out with an Asian centric movie and we're going to come out with our own Kung Fu epic and we're going to show everybody how Marvel does Kung Fu. And I think that's We got a lot really to make up for with cool. Iron Fist. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking yeah. true. Damn, that's so true. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah, so what we've seen of Shang-Chi I think looks really cool. Yeah. And that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. That said, thank you for joining me on this adventure, E. Like I said, we'll, we'll take a break, apparently, um, unless something comes up in between and we, we do something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for, for now, we'll take a pause. Um, thank Indeed. you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, we hope you enjoyed Falcon and Winter Soldier. We hope you enjoyed WandaVision. We hope you enjoyed us. Hopefully. Um, uh, and I'm, hope, I'm hoping, well, we're hoping this isn't so long of a pause as to where you might not exactly kind of lose touch but we're hoping you don't and if you don't we thank you so much for being so loyal and we'll be for loki i think we'll be pretty damn refreshed and pretty geeked out because it's gonna be a while so hopefully by then we're gonna introduce you to a nice fresh awesome kick-ass show when we come back and on that note 
Thank you, goodbye. Thank you. Hit subscribe, please. Hit subscribe, like, share. Thank you for all of us. We appreciate you guys watching so fucking much. And we'll see you guys next time for Loki. See you in June.